What's going on everybody, Sean here. Today we're gonna to talk about nine things that I wish I knew when I started out programming. Uh, it would have saved me so much time. So let's just dive right into the list. And the first thing that uh, I would recommend to my former self is to not stay in what I call the tutorial trap for so long. What is the tutorial trap? Well, uh, I think a lot of us fall into this where we just enjoy learning, right? We like learning new things. So we see this bright new shiny toy and it's like, oh, let me do a tutorial on that. And when you're just learning, don't get me wrong, you have to start out on tutorials. That's how you learn, right? But uh, what you may find yourself falling into is just tutorial after tutorial after tutorial. You've been doing that for six months and you haven't built anything on your own. When I decided to build my own app, my own idea, where I couldn't just follow a recipe of a tutorial, like a to-do list, a paint by numbers, my learning skyrocketed. You know, I was forced to take the ideas in my head and make them happen on an app, right? I wasn't following somebody else's instruction. So I had to dive into the documentation or maybe I did follow a tutorial, but I could only take bits and pieces from it because it wasn't, you know, exactly what I needed. Uh, anyway, long story short, if you find yourself in this tutorial trap and feel stuck, like you can't build anything on your own, you have to follow a tutorial, the only way out of that is to start building stuff on your own. It's gonna be rough at first, but trust me, your learning will go through the roof. The next thing I wanna talk about is to not, you know, skim over the fundamentals of the language to move on to the fun stuff, if you will, right? Really drill those fundamentals. It's like it's like playing a sport, right? If you're, if you're trying to learn how to shoot a basketball, you're gonna shoot thousands and thousands of shots. You're just not gonna go right into playing a game. Well, you shouldn't go right into playing a game when you've only shot a couple shots, right? So same thing with the fundamentals of not only the language, but of, you know, iOS, speaking from an iOS developer specifically. Like I use table views as an example. You can't just build one table view and think you're good to go on table views onto the next thing, right? You just gotta drill it. It's like shooting a thousand jump shots, like I said. I know table views so well, it's because I built a thousand of them, <laughs> right? You're not just gonna build one and then know it cold. So drill the fundamentals, not only of the language, but of the platform as well. My next piece of advice would be to not worry about memorizing things. It doesn't matter how senior of a developer you are, you're probably gonna Google the simplest of things each and every day. Like it just happens to all of us. The, the key here is to know where to look for it, where to find the information you want, whether that's documentation, a certain blog post, uh, et cetera. But don't worry about you know being able to, I, I think people starting out have this misconception that senior developers just sit in front of their computer, just type away you know, for an hour without looking something up. They just do it all from their head. That is absolutely not the case. I, I mentioned table views earlier, even though, sure, I can create the pretty typical standard table view, but if you do anything with like dynamic cell height or maybe section headers, that kind of stuff, I'm gonna be like, oh, you know, I can't remember how to do that exactly. Let me look that up real quick. Again, you have this misconception that we just sit there and just type away for hours, never looking anything up couldn't be further from the truth. So the key here is to kind of learn how to learn and then also like know where to find the stuff. Don't worry about memorizing. Next up, I wanna talk about finding a mentor. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be somebody in person. You know, if you live in a remote place where there's not a lot of developers, it can be online via Twitter, uh, et cetera, or online coaching. Some people offer that. I don't know who, uh, but just find somebody who earlier in your career can help guide you and coach you and, and get you over those hurdles. I know when I first started out, I didn't really have this for the first year of my career. And when I got stuck, I'd be stuck for days. And, and it was not only did it like slow me down, but it was discouraging, right? Nobody likes to be stuck for days on a simple problem when you can reach out to a mentor and just say, hey, can you explain closures to me real quick? I say that because closures hang up a lot of people. And then having somebody, uh, a mentor explain that to you can help get you over that hurdle and back on your way. Again, that'll speed you up and you'll spend less time being discouraged, which the more time you spend being discouraged, the more likely you are to quit and not complete this journey of becoming a, a software developer. My next piece of advice is I would start diving into the documentation of not only your language, but the platform, whichever you're working on, you know, iOS, web, Android, whatever, uh, as soon as possible. Kind of like I said before, uh, many of us start off doing tutorials and that's how we start learning. But like I said, once you can be self-sufficient and not rely on a cookie cutter tutorial, you can say, hey, I wanna build this certain aspect. And then you go to the documentation around you know, that aspect of the platform, you can dig in and you can figure it out for your own. Now you're self-sufficient and, and that's how you really get things done. That's how you get out of that tutorial trap that I mentioned earlier. And now you're on your own, uh, building your own ideas and, and you're on your way. So the documentation I know can be a little daunting, especially in the iOS Swift world. Uh, it's not exactly straightforward. And I get tons of requests for, hey, can you do a video on how to read the documentation? But 
and I've thought about how I would do this, but truthfully, it's one of those things where you just gotta dive in and it, it sucks, but it just gets better and easier over time. You kinda gotta go through that learning curve. Um, so fortunately, there's no magic bullet here, but just dive in as soon as possible and you'll get through that rough patch and, and be out the other side uh, faster than you know it. The next advice is that you have to love it. Luckily, I do love it, but I, I talk to a lot of beginner programmers who are inexperienced or just getting started and truthfully, they do it for the money. Right? We all know software developers get paid pretty well and that's the only reason they do it. They don't do it because they love to solve problems or they don't do it because they love to build or create things. Right? That's the reason you should be doing it is because you just you love the fact that you can take an idea in your head, type on a keyboard with those colored text back there and then something magical pops up on a phone. Like, if that is just so enticing to you, you're in it for the right reasons. And uh, again, you just have to love this because kind of like I mentioned earlier, you're going to run into rough patches. You're going to hit roadblocks. And if you don't love it, those roadblocks are gonna knock you down and you're probably gonna give up. Um, however, if you love it, you're gonna kind of take those challenges head on, plow through those roadblocks and, and be on your way. And newsflash, those roadblocks don't go away. Doesn't matter how senior you are, or how long you've been doing this, Technology's always changing. Something new is gonna come out. AR kit, AR glasses, VR, whatever. And you're gonna have to learn all over again. So if you don't love the process of learning and solving problems and building and creating, uh, it's gonna be a rough road. So uh, again, you have to love this. Building on that, because I just kind of talked about how, how rough it can be, but uh, it does get easier. And, and here's why. As you go through your career, like it's gonna seem super daunting that you know there's all these possibilities of apps you can build. However, as you go through your career, whether it's contracting, working at other companies, you're gonna be building various different apps. And when you build these apps, you're going to have these code bases on your hard drive. So you'll have access to previous code you've written uh, to use in future projects. Now, I'm not saying you're just gonna copy and paste that code, but let's say you built a you know, fully fleshed out custom camera screen, and then two years later, you're going to build another camera app, and you're like, oh, I've done that before. Let me go back, and again, you're not gonna copy and paste it, but you're, you're gonna have a lot of the heavy lifting has already been done for you. So what I've found, I've built probably now 10 production apps between contracting and startups, uh, over time, I have built many, many features uh, that can be done on an iPhone. So whenever I come across something you know, tricky, I know that I can always go back to, I call it my toolbox. I can always go back to my toolbox of code, see what I've done before and pull from there. And again, a lot of times the heavy lifting has been done and I just got to tweak it or add some little stuff. So it does get easier the longer you do it. And then as always, I want to preach patience. Again, so many people reach out to me and say, how can I become an iOS developer as fast as possible? And right away, like you already have the wrong mindset. Like this is such a marathon. It's not a sprint. It is a very, very long journey. And if you're just trying to get there as fast as possible, you know, all the other stuff I talked about earlier in the video is really going to come and bite you in the ass. So just be patient and don't compare yourself to somebody else as well. Like I even, this happens to me sometimes, right? I've been doing this for about four years and I look at developers who've been doing it for like eight and I'm like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not as good as them. It's like, they've been doing it twice as long as you. So it's hard to compare yourself to other developers. Um, you're on your own journey. It's gonna take a while. And like I said before, if you love it, you're determined, you're gonna get there, uh, just keep plugging away. But just patience is the key. If, if software development was so easy that you could learn it in two months, everybody would be doing it, the market would be oversaturated, and it wouldn't be such a coveted position. So have patience, it'll pay off in the long run. And then finally, probably my most important piece of advice, I've said this time and time again, get involved in Twitter ASAP. It took me two years to finally start interacting in iOS conversations on Twitter, and I just kick myself all the time. Uh, this sounds like a bold statement, but I would say Twitter is the most important tool for my developer career. Just the people I've met, the developers at other companies I, I've you know, gotten to know and, and meet you know, through Twitter, uh, it's amazing. And I can really only speak for the Swift community, but the iOS and Swift community is amazing on Twitter, super helpful. Uh, I know Twitter may have a bad rap for some of you, but Twitter has like a lot of different types, right? Like there's sports Twitter, financial Twitter, Software developer Twitter, at least in the Swift world, is amazing. Obviously, like political Twitter is probably a cesspool, but you know, developer Twitter, great. This is a big part of how networking is done in the software developer world. You interact on Twitter. Next thing you know, you meet somebody at a conference and they know you because you've, you've been interacting on Twitter. It's anyway, I could go on for days and I did in this video, check it out. But uh, Twitter is so valuable for a developer. And I, again, I wasted two years being scared to jump into a conversation. Don't do that, start right away and uh, you'll be happy you did.
So those are the nine things I wish I knew before I became a software developer. Uh, hope some of that helped you out. If you like what I'm doing here, I put out a show called Swift News every Monday in a tutorial or two throughout the week. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.